So stakeholders, they all have their KPIs. They all want to sell more, to have a stronger brand or whatever. So a duty of a strategic designer is to integrate these business assumptions from the very beginning of, 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 the, of their process. So from when you start diverging, so from when you start looking at what employees, what, uh, what your user want, one of the criteria to come up with ideas should be those two, three key business assumptions that are important for your stakeholders. So know from the beginning, I'm gonna aim at increasing um, the NPR of this percentage. I'm gonna aim at reducing costs. And those are just requirements as any other requirement. They can evolve during the project, so it's, don't take it as something given, but have them there. Use them to, to direct your creativity as well. So those are the four elements of what we call strategic human-centeredness. Again, about making the experience the main driver of innovation strategy. It's about using human-centeredness to humanize technology. It's about engaging the employees and engaging the stakeholders. That's, of course, a beautiful picture. We wish in all companies that would be possible, but in fact, it's not. So it's very difficult to get there. So Mowgli really needs to grow and fight and toughen up in order to be able to push, to conserve his humanity within the jungle. And what I want to spend the rest of the presentation is, um, to, is talking about um, what can you do in order to grow strategic design. So what um, can you improve? Which uh, leverage can you use to convince stakeholders to give you more space? to grow within a company, to become, to scale strategic design within a company. And it's, it's going to be mainly around two things. The narrative that you use to talk about design, so how do you interact in those conversations with stakeholders, and how do you plan your strategic design takeover. Um, Let's start with the narrative. So um, the research that I'm involved um, with at the moment is looking at how large organizations grow strategic design. So what are the main actions, the main techniques that they use to scale strategic design? And uh, it emerged that strategic designers use different narratives, different ways of promoting the design. Probably the most frequent is the sell narrative, so they treat, they go for the value of design. They treat design as a um, product, as a transaction. So if I give you design, you'll get more any KPI, more um, return on investment on your technology, you'll get more sales, you'll get more brand loyalty. So that's the sale narrative. That's the narrative that everyone asks me they look at universities for the uh, holy grail answer of what is the value of design. What if we do more design, what, what does it get better? Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer and this, a narrative that, only, that doesn't always work. And uh, there are different reasons for that. First of all, it's very short term, so you can get to, the next pro to, to this project, but it doesn't say nothing about the long-term adoption of design. And the problem is also that probably when you try to sell design, it's always that middle manager that won't be there next time, so you'll start again. And it's also very difficult to really isolate the, the, the value of design. So normally, um, when I talk to managers, so this is an inner crowd, so I can uh, say, I can criticize design research in this environment. Oops. Yeah. Uh, we show this. Uh, I, I would show this, this study. Maybe you know it. It's from um, uh, the Design Management Institute in the US. And what they say here is uh, they look at the um, at, at companies um, uh, quoted at the, in the US stock market, and what they notice is that those companies, so the red line, those companies that 
use design at a strategic level. So they have strategic designers, they have a CDO, they use design for branding, they use design for finding business opportunities. After, in a period of 15 years, they have a stock value that is 211% higher than the others. That looks great, but if, it, if you look at that deeper, can you really say it's that that increase in value can be only isolated to the fact that you have a chief design officer. Very difficult to say, and that is the same in any kind of project where you say, oh, I'm going to advise you to um, target that particular user, that particular need of the user. Can you really translate that choice into sales? Is it, can, can you ever find that finest connection? Uh, very difficult. So, if you still want to use the sell, the sell narrative to, to convince managers to give you credit with design, then perhaps this way of using it is a bit bad. It could, could help you a bit more. So, start with um, your business goal as assumptions from the beginning, rather than as an argument ex post. So, try to incorporate those KPIs from the beginning, rather than using to sell your work. Then there's a second narrative that is becoming really popular nowadays, which is to convince a company to do more design, more strategic design, we're going to teach to them uh, strategic design. We are going to involve them in all sorts of lectures, experiences, um, seminars, um, hackathon, whatever, so that they can learn the basics of design. That's another interesting narrative. Um, it helps to bring certain knowledge to make people aware of, about um, strategic design or design thinking or UX strategy, whatever is your goal. Uh, but the problem with, 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 with those experiences is that they rarely stick. So I'm a lecturer myself, and I know that in order to make sure that a concept, a piece, a skill is acquired, you first go from giving the knowledge, understanding the knowledge, let them apply the knowledge in a controlled environment. So you give them a project, you give your uh, managers a project and you guide them through that. But then it requires a lot of repetition till these people can use it independently. And we all know those statistics, in order to create a new habit, a new behavior, you need 10,000 hours of practice, you need 66 days in a row in which you do the new behavior. So this is an interesting strategy that is used today. Use it carefully, or you're gonna see it in a moment, use it in combination with other things. And one of the things that I find particularly interesting and particularly successful no, not everyone agrees with that, definitely. <laughs> but um, what I find particularly interesting is the problem-solving uh, narrative. So if you want uh, your stakeholders to give credit to you, stay through to yourself to being a designer and offer to solve, her, to solve a problem for them. So scout for problems, for unsolved issues within a company, and then quickly have a design session about that, a creative session and hackathon about that. And uh, in this cycle of interviews that I'm doing, that emerged as one of the most successful strategies. Uh, one of the stories comes from Bob Schwartz from General Electric. He started in 2008 at GE Healthcare, trying to grow the design function there. And that's what he told me. You have to be a little bit maverick. You have to be a bit rebel, work underground and with your small team, team go around, be an entrepreneur and look for problems to solve. Look for um, insights that have not been used. Look for um, tech, tech teams that are having troubles for something and offer them a help. So he also went to the MRI scanner uh, group and what one of the insights that they, they gave him is that the entry point of that one of the problems was the entry point that round thing where your body goes through when you enter the, scan, the, the machine and what is he, he proposed a solution that it looks like you um, well the entrance should looks like when you open the hands towards um, another person so it's more inviting 
And with that, he got the attention of that team and then started word of mouth and then got to a, a, a point where now the design functions really drives the way in which GE healthcare innovate. So the problem solving strategy costs time, but it's, it's one of the most effective ones. And it's, it sticks to who you are. You are there to solve problems. 